three. Okay, recording started. So we'll be sharing the video with the PM community. Um, I also ask that uh, we only follow one rule in this uh, group practice session, which is a use the raise hand button on Zoom to um, raise your hands if you'd like to share your thoughts. Um, the question that we're going to do together is design a Google product for the Olympics. So what are we going to do first? Who has some ideas on what to do as a first step? Okay, go ahead. Thank you so much for raising your hand. Himanshu, what would we do? Yeah, I'll ask the clarification question since this is a Google product. So uh, just want to see, uh, we are trying to design a product for the audience who are attending the Olympics or the organizers or the player who are participating in the event. Got it. Okay, that's a good question. Who are you designing for? Is this for the audience or organizers? Um, let's say that we're going to design this for the audience. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions you'd like to ask me? Uh, let me give a minute and maybe I'll, sure. I'll come back. Yeah. Sure, sounds good. All right, Apurva, go ahead. Yeah. Um... I, it, it's more of like a suggestion uh, rather than a, cl or a clarifying assumption. Okay. I am thinking uh, in designing this product, I would like to leverage Google's existing uh, competency and expertise and maybe even leverage some of its various products to sort of bring a cohesive uh, product experience or a new product that is specifically use, uh, you know, uh, um, th th that specifically caters to this specific, uh, to this situation. So was that okay or? or... Yeah, so um, first of all, to answer your question, yes, that's okay. Now, I wanna also add that, you know, I think you should assume that you're expected to do that, right? Because the question says design a Google product, for the Olympics. So, you know, my answer to you is yes, that's totally fine. But I would say if I was you, I would just like kind of make that assumption. And even if you're gonna like to present it, like I would just like kind of say it with more confidence. I'd be like, okay, given that we're saying like design a Google product, I'm gonna assume that it's gonna be one of Google's products. And therefore it's gonna kind of take advantage of like what Google is very strong at, which is like organizing data and then kind of like move on, right? Um, like it would be kind of expected, I would say, given that it's a Google product that you kind of leveraging, you know, Google's core competencies. So uh, I'm just like highlighting that so that, um, you know, it doesn't come across as you, you're kind of discovering this rather than, um, yes, it is, of course, I'm going to be doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Anybody would like to ask me? Vinay, go ahead. <clears throat> I do not have a question, but I would actually start off uh, by um, reviewing the fit to Google's mission with respect to what's happening. Okay. Um, especially in this case, I mean, when there's Olympics, there's a lot of people there. There's uh, people who are participating, players who are participating in the Olympics. There are people who are attending the Olympics. Um, and they come in with a lot of information there, right? Uh, which is like, they want to navigate to the stadium, uh, they want to click pictures, they want to share pictures, uh, they want to like uh, shop around, they want to actually travel to get to the Olympics. Uh, uh, which wherein, so this tells me that there's a lot of flow of information across. Uh, there's some um, you know, you know, Google products that are already present in that, uh, in, in that space is in the form of Google Photos, Google Travel, Google Maps, and then uh, to help people like find the right businesses for shopping, for reading Google ads. Uh, so, there's clearly a lot of information and there's a significant opportunity to kind of organize this information and make it useful. So there's like a perfect uh, fit for Google uh, with respect to like doing something at the Olympics. Got it, okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and I wrote down some of those things. Uh, I think you're totally right. I totally agree with you, like kind of providing a context of it. Um, you mentioned at first, you're gonna talk about Google's mission but then we talked about the, the, the context of Olympics for the audience. Um, it's okay 
to talk about the context of Olympics, I just want to say, if you're kind of thinking about what was mentioned, don't forget to highlight that. Like kind of say, okay. you know, the way I think about it is that Google's mission is like, you know, organized data, right? Um, and then go on and say, now in this context, the way I think about it is that, you know, in Olympics, there are different user groups. We've decided we're focusing on the audience or people, and by audience, what I mean is like people that are there to like watch the Olympics. And I can think about a bunch of pain points when I think about their user experience or user journey. And you kind of highlighted a few of them. So I just want to make sure that, you know, you're kind of giving a clear indication to the interviewer that you're going through this like kind of thought process of, um, first, I'm just going to remind myself that Google's mission is organizing data. And now I'm going to think about the Olympics user the Olympics user journey from the lens of data, right? And then you kind of go through that user journey of an audience attending the Olympics to watch games, like what sort of needs they have and things like that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. That was a great point, Bijan. Uh, the reason I was trying to refrain from the mission, I'm so sorry, I think this is my bad, is that I was doing mocks and then at some point it became too cliche to state the mission and go from there. But I can see how it can come across that you're not even talking about the mission. So, uh, yeah. And to be honest, like if it's cliche to you in a mock interview, imagine how much of a cliche it's going to be to the like interviewer this. when they exactly. hear the word mission. Yeah. So I almost <laughs> feel like if somebody uses the word mission, it almost is an indication that they were too nervous about this interview about not performing well, that they over practiced. Exactly. Right? So ideally you don't even use that word. And you ideally you would just say, well, I know Google is in the business of organizing data. Yeah. And I want to think about it from the lens of data, right? right. Uh, it's a lot more, you know, casual and a lot more kind of. Exactly. You know, conversational. So just like something to keep in mind. Yeah, the other thing that I recently, something I read, I mean, in the Google I.O., Sundar Pichai was saying, uh, he said, like, it's to organize the world's information, convert the information to knowledge and make the knowledge more accessible, right? So something like yeah. that, I've been searching, what you said, it may make sense, right? It's just instead of mission, just saying business, because to your point, absolutely right. The interviewer, the moment you hear the word mission, they're like, yeah, this is everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, the other thing is, like, also remember, um, that mission part is a very, very small part of the interview, right? Um, it's okay if we sometimes don't completely nail one part, like, you know, what the mission is and all that. It's more about, can we design a product, right? As a product manager, we're gonna be designing a Google product. Can we design a Google product? Like, what do we need to do to design a Google product? We need to know who we're building for, what sort of problems they have, right? Um, what are the solutions to those problems, right? And how are we going to go build it? So it's kind of important to keep that context in mind of like, what's the ultimate goal? Okay, so we're 15 minutes into the session. I'm going to continue a little bit. Uh, we talked a little bit about the context of like Google, uh, Olympics for some of the, um, you know, Olympics uh, audience or Olympics watchers, let's say. Um, what else can we say about that? Like, I mean, we're we're kind of like skipping a little bit like we kind of went from clarifications immediately to the user grouping we said okay we're just going to focus on the audience um and we started talking about the user journey of the audience the people that are attending that's totally fine um, but let's spend a little bit time on that and like kind of think a little bit about um what are some of the things that come to our mind when we when we think about the uh somebody attending um, the Olympics and like watching the Olympics. Uh, go ahead, Amit. Uh, I do have a clarifying question, Amit. I know that we actually sure. did uh, talk about uh, attendees or probably the viewers, uh, organizers. But apart from attendees, they can be people who are actually viewing online. I'm like, uh, think about Olympics as a global event, right? Whole world is actually connected to it. And if you look at Google Mission, when we design a product, we normally want to scale it to a billion user. That's so, a really good point you brought up. I'm so glad that you brought this up. Now, I want to ask you a question. How would you, as a, as a leader, right, as a product leader, how would you, instead of turning it into a question for me, how would you make a statement and still give me a chance to correct you if I disagree with you? 
Yeah, so the way that I would uh, probably think about it is, um, I'll probably say that um, uh, the way uh, Google is a global company, um, okay. and there are a lot of products that actually touch uh, that uh, a normal human being touch on a day-to-day lives, be it like search, maps, or photos, or uh, uh, or, or um, um, a- anything. Uh, so I believe, I think one of the Google mission is to make sure that the product we design, it eventually scales to a billion people. So I think I would not limit it just to the users who are attending. I'll probably even think about probably users who are viewing um, uh, because that is where I believe Google probably has uh, more capability to kind of serve the people uh, with their unmet needs. And I can All definitely right. go talk about some of the pain points here. Got it. Right. And, you know, I think uh, here you, you kind of showed your decisiveness, in my opinion. But you explained your thinking behind why you're going to actually pick one particular type of user group, right? And uh, you, you could all, like, and you kind of left it open for me to disagree with you as well. I mean, you could have said, I'm happy to change if needed, but um, I think it makes sense for me to go down that path. That's kind of what you implied. And I think that's really good because you're showing that uh, you have your independent way of thinking and you came up to a conclusion, but at the same time, you're flexible enough that you're giving me a chance to actually say, you know what, I've decided I'm just gonna, let's just like focus on something else, right? Let's focus on another user group. Um, so, okay, so that's a, that's a very good point. So, okay, so we've decided that we're gonna focus on basically maybe the audience um, and not necessarily by audience, we mean like people attend visiting the, the, the city or the country that the Olympics is happening. It's basically, um, you know, anybody who's um, an audience of the Olympics, right? Um, okay, so what do we do next? What's next here now that we have like this additional piece of information? Who's interested in kind of helping me think about what to do next? Go ahead, Amit. I'm, I'm thinking we can further subsegment those user group. We can okay. think about um, like, uh, because this is a broad user group, people who are actually an audience. We can think about okay. people who uh, who are like, um, uh, who who want to kind of um, know about uh, the know-how of the, of, of the Olympics and they didn't get the chance to kind of attend that in person. Um, okay. People who, so something like, I'm um, like, uh, who, um, who probably have a passion to kind of be in touch with the, what is happening around Olympics on a day-to-day basis. Um, the second would be, I'm like probably a casual person who probably just want to know, I'm like at the end of the day, I'm like what is happening in the Olympics. And the third user group can be something like, which probably don't care anything with respect to Olympics. And through that, we can talk about particular user group that we can target based on the impact that can be created to the product that we're going to design or the frequency that they're going to use um, based on um, like the product because Olympics is something which is like, hap- there's so many games, there's so many things which are happening, right? So they probably will be like getting updated on an hourly basis also. Got it. So thanks for sharing that, Amit. Um, I'm curious to know, what was the first user group? I, I got the second one and the third one. You said the second one is a casual so, so, person. Yeah. yeah, second one was casual. Third one was which basically don't uh, care about Olympics. So for, first one is basically I'm like, who want to be in touch with the Olympics uh, uh, with regards to what is happening there. Right? So we can probably put into a better words, um, something like like a power user or something which is um, uh, which has a hobby or uh, I'm like... Uh, is a, is a key avid uh, uh, viewer of what is happening in the Olympics on a regular basis. I'm got not getting that word. Yeah, that that's fair. Okay, so I think I think it's fine the way you are kind of thinking about it, like the three user groups at a very high level. Now, one thing I would say though is the third user group is not so much of a user group. They're ju- they're not really a user because they're not using it. Um, so I would pretty much like ignore it, right? Um, I think it's okay for you to ignore it. Um, let me know if you disagree and why, but um, uh, that's that's kind of my thinking is like, you know, it's like saying like, who are the users of a car? Um, we would think about like the drivers, um, you know, the passengers, and then maybe we would say like people that don't, are not in the car. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's almost like irrelevant. Like we don't care. It's only about people that are interacting with the car. Those are the people that we really care about. 
Um, okay, so I'm curious to know if that makes sense. Otherwise, um, I can see Vinay, you've raised your hand. Yeah, sure. So there's one more segment of users that I was thinking about, uh, which okay. is, you know, Olympics also as a social event, you know, there's friends who go to the Olympics and uh, there are groups of fans, right, uh, who go to Olympics for a sport, for a country, uh, who could not go either due to the due to the fact that one of them or most of them they could not get a ticket for the for the for the game or even they couldn't plan mm -hmm. their travel with things like covid and now monkeypox going on in the world right so the, 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 that's the reason the user group that i can think about is like a uh, group of users like a group of uh, fans who are who are pretty passionate but who couldn't make it to the olympics got it um now i agree with you I would say one thing to keep in mind is that ideally when you're thinking about user groups, you want to make sure that your user groups are mutually exclusive from each other as much as possible, right? Um, and the reason I'm saying this is like, you, you want to kind of think about how you're like segmenting the users in one spectrum, right? Um, so for example, um, right now, the user group that you highlighted could actually still be part of the other two user groups of like people that are, you know, power users um, really following Olympics and, or people that are like, you know, casually trying to stay in touch. Like maybe they belong more to the power user group. So I just wanna kind of like make sure that when we're thinking about user grouping, um, we're thinking about like kind of unique user groups as much as possible because, um, at any time, you can really, uh, you know, slice and dice the data in so many different ways and segment the data in different ways. And sometimes where people like kind of, you know, struggle with is like, you know, for example, I'll give an extreme example to kind of like communicate my, my um, view on this. Like, you don't want to say um, there are people in the age range of like 20 to 30, and then there are power users, right? Sure, these are two different user groups, but they're not mutually exclusive, right? Um, somebody could be a power user and also belong to that group. That was kind of an extreme example I gave to kind of communicate that right. view. Right. Um, just want to make sure that we're kind of clarifying that. Yeah. Just love for your guidance here. Maybe I'm yeah. uh, just love for your thoughts. Uh, I think the, the group that I was thinking about, I agree with you, there's an overlap with the first line there. But the third segment is actually not a single user, but it's a group of like group of friends uh, or a, a group of supporters of a sport team uh, who are usually there for a social experience, more for a social experience of being together, cheering for their team together, uh, or, you know, just as friends to go to the uh, Olympics. Do you still think that would count as an overlap? The reason that I'm said is like, if, if we go after that segment, for instance, what we saw may be very different from what we saw for the first, seg first segment, because if you really go after this segment, then creating that social experience may be like super valuable. So that's where I was thinking about, but love to hear your thoughts too. Yeah, I think uh, I see where you're coming from. I think there's still a little bit of a, too much of an overlap. So I would uh, Got um, it. still be on the cautious side um, because Makes then, sense. okay, so what you're doing is here, you're really kind of highlighting the fact that they're extreme on the um, social communication attribute, Correct. right? Correct. So then you want to make sure you have another user group um, that's not so strong on social communication attribute, right? right? I'm trying to keep it very simple. Um, and, sense. you know, you could you could do that. You could have, like, different user groups with different needs. Um, I'm just trying to uh, kind of keep this in mind that we really have 30 minutes during the interview. You want to keep it really simple. Right. So ideally, like, you do a very, very simple grouping and you kind of move on. Um, okay, so we have limited time. I'm going to assume that we're going to go with the casual users, right? Um, that are trying to stay up to date um, with what's going on. Um, can somebody tell me why I would pick casual versus power users? Maybe Amit, would you be interested in just like telling me real quick? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, just allow me another 10 seconds when I was thinking about user group, probably we can think about people who are attending in person and uh, and offline and within offline we can have uh, which are uh, power users who wanted to be always up to date and versus the casual users uh, so if we have to really uh, uh, kind of pick a casual users the reason why i will pick it will be the tam because that is the highest tam 
and uh, oh. and in terms of frequency i think it is something which will be low but impact of the mission will be high because you know these are the people who probably don't want to get updated on a regular basis i'm like because the power users may find a way to kind of get update on the olympics through other channels but yeah. uh, casual users are the one who actually uses google products on a day to day basis and that is where we can probably make an impact got it okay that's perfect sounds good thank you so much for sharing that um we're going to move to uh so now we've decided we're going to kind of focus on like people that are interested in like kind of staying updated with what's going on with the olympics um you know they're not power users they're not like you know big fans of like olympics and like trying to really stay updated with everything that's going on but um this is a user group right so what do we do next so now that we've identified the user group what's the next step what is the next thing that we should do like who can help me kind of move forward from here Okay, perfect. Approve. Are you right? So let's think about the needs of this user. What are some of their needs? Would you be able to help, or somebody else who's interested? Uh, yeah, I can. I can talk about it. So sure. I think one of the things um, a casual user might care about is they probably are not following all of the games. They maybe you know somebody like me who just cares about let's say figure skating, right? And that's mm. all I care about. So I would want to know what are the key events happening. in figure mm-hmm. skating that i would care about most likely maybe where us is participating right so being able to get a tailored schedule of the events i would care about mm-hmm. right yeah. and also being able to access the event to view that event remotely so in uh, a way it's kind of two needs first so that i can sort of move my own schedule around to be able to view these events and then second is to be able to view these events got it so i i think these are these are two great um user needs like kind of being able to tailor them like to your needs and also ability for you to to watch the ones that you're interested in i think on the watching the ones that you're interested in there's maybe like um some more information like what what else can we talk okay i mean go ahead you raise your hand would love to hear your thoughts on yeah Yeah, so uh, I think apart from uh, Apurva, what she mentioned on the two user needs, I think I'm just thinking along the similar lines. Since Olympics have so many games, I think it's a great opportunity for people to learn more about different games at the same time, right? Uh, because uh, I'm like uh, uh, maybe I'm I I don't know about that sport at all. I'm like this is something that I can probably give my my kid or myself uh, uh, kind of a little bit awareness, and I can actually kind of bring that sport to my home. Got need. it. So, how would you describe that as a pain point or as a need? I don't disagree with you. I think it's a. I think it's an interesting point you're bringing up. I yeah, just so want to make sure that we're always thinking about it from the perspective mm-hmm. of the user need. So, right? I would probably say that Olympics normally happens like once in two years to four years, which is where most of the games, I'm like, uh, which are played around the world, are brought in. we normally as a kid or as a as a parent are being exposed to like made i'm um, like limited amount of games this is an opportunity to learn or kind of become a fan of the new games um uh, and and bring uh, some um, kind of awareness and happiness or excitedness okay. you you're, you're talking like, about opportunity i'm talking about user pain point um, um and i'm sorry or, or, or how about the rules for example for example how about the rules i'm like i'm probably following a game but i don't know about the rules Okay. okay i i think like kind of approve of mention something like maybe need to explore new sports i was also thinking like maybe i'm i'm curious to learn more about other sports i would like to learn more about other okay. sports right like you you're kind of like specifically talking about um like a need that I, that humans have um during that time because once we know that we know what that underlying need is it's a lot easier for us to think about so can i add a little bit to that bijan just to tailor sure. it tailor the same point like i i i think it's nice uh that people would i would want to learn about new games but honestly if i'm thinking i would care about which are the new games where us is doing great right so like being able to sort of uh, narrow down my interest like i i i i won't be able to keep like learn about 100 types of games or even decide how from these 100 games which ones would i be interested in like that's a lot of got it, work got it. so 
So instead, like uh, to uh, Amit's point, maybe uh, the need to know uh, about uh, where my country or whatever, like uh, where uh, my group or my friends, my friends are following some specific games, then like I can put in those preferences and then I can add those new sports or new games to my interest. Okay, so um, I, I want to go to um, Lane in a second, uh, but I, I just wanted to quickly um, say that the way I, I added some more context here is like I said, I'd like to learn more about other sports and events um, that will be interesting to me, right? Like it's kind of more like, like to your point, I want to know like the things that are interesting. For example, like when Canada started doing well and like, I don't know, like basketball, for example, um, I was like very excited. I was like all of a sudden interested in like sports, you know, I was all of a sudden interested in basketball. Um, so I, I think that's kind of like the idea. And then I also added that, um, you know, kind of along the lines of like your interest in like specific areas, I'd like to know how my country is doing in certain sports, right? Um, okay, so continue, Lane. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I find, right? I, yeah, I, I could say about that. Um, so, as somebody who, um, you know, I know a lot of people that I know are really excited about soccer or football, wherever you come from. Um, and I really don't understand the rules. Like, I don't understand what offside means and that kind of stuff. So, like, you know, when I see people really excited about, like, oh, our team took silver in soccer and I'm like, well, I don't know what that means. You know, like, I think that that could be a pain point. Um, so and then knowing, um, the, knowing the kind of the, the rules of the game, like, I would yeah, like, like to, what, is that, like, what is, is that game even about, right? Like, what, God, well, how do you okay. look, yeah. you know? Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, and then I, I guess a pain point that I've had about the Olympics is that, um, uh, I get a lot of alerts um, all the time about this country has taken this thing or whatever. I'm like, guys, I don't want to know every time that something happens. I just want like top line where the highlights for today at the end of the day. That's all I want. Got it. So you have basically, I'm, I'm busy. Um, I just want to know um, the, the the highlights, right, um, of what's happening. Okay, fair enough. Thank you so much for adding that. I added the two of them. Um, I want to go to Tina because Tina hasn't spoken much yet. So Tina, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. Um, Lane just Lane just took my idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, I was okay. also thinking along the similar lines of like, Got why it. are they casual users? Probably because they don't have a lot of time to invest in watching the Olympics. Yeah. So I want to get a that summary. That is a good point. Although she couldn't have taken your idea, she probably came up with it herself because she hadn't heard your idea yet, but yes. Yes, I'm just joking. Right. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So um, we've come up with a few ideas. We've come up with a few pain points. I'll go to Apuva, and then after that, um, we're going to continue and move forward. Go ahead, Apuva. Yeah, I think uh, basically to the same uh, point that Lane and Tina were mentioning, I think uh, uh, the time is limited. And I might be interested in like three, four different events that are happening simultaneously. So even if mm -hmm. I have the time, I can't watch four events at the same time. So then uh, what to do? Like, I, you know, so if there is a system, like if so, a mechanism to help me keep updated on what's happening in basketball at the same time, what's happening in gymnastics, that's great. Right. So oh. I know, or at least I know which one to on like maybe you know like oh i have this one hour but now i don't know which one should i which even should i watch so if i know some more excitement is happening and with the gymnastics i'll i'll pick that something like that Got it. so I'm, I'm going to put this actually under like you know they're interested in like some specific areas because i think it's kind of related to that um now i think underneath the pain points that you highlighted there is also um, this pain point that you kind of hinted at, which is maybe I would like to be informed of the most interesting events to watch, right? Yeah. Like, I, it's kind of like, okay, there's a lot of, to your point, you know, gymnastic um, events happening, a lot of competitions, there's a lot in basketball, everything else, but I really want to know the most interesting ones to watch. Right. Exactly. Because I probably don't have the time to watch Holland. Right. Um, 
so I want to watch the most interesting uh, parts of the most interesting to me, right? Yeah. Parts of the Olympics. And, and that's, to be honest, that's an interesting problem. It's not always easy to solve, right? Um, okay, cool. So we're going to have to continue because we have limited time. Um, you can imagine we can spend a lot of time, like thinking a lot of about, we can think about a lot of other pain points. Um, what do we do here? Like, so now we've come up with a bunch of, you know, user needs or pain points, we can call them. Uh, what's the next thing for us to do? Um, I'm going to assume that your hand is up from the last round, so I'm going to lower it, but uh, feel free to uh, raise it again. Um, Himanshu, what do you think we should do next? Actually, I wanted to mention a pain point, um, but uh, if you are moving ahead, uh, I think it's okay. The... Go ahead if you can share it real quickly. I'll add it, and then we'll yeah. The on. one pain point I was thinking um, along the same lines, which uh, um, these guys mentioned, um, is Olympics are happening in different countries, so I may not be in the same time zone. So even though I have, let's say, what Apurva mentioned, like you know, I have interest in certain games and I belong to a certain country, but I can't watch it, uh, that game because of the time difference. So maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I want to watch it, but I can't because it's happening during late hours or at the night, right? That's one pain point. Got it. So how, how, what's, uh, how would you describe the pain point? Like you can, you can watch it if you want. Um, I just want to make sure that you, you're describing it as a user need, right? And it has to be something that's unique from what's in this list, right? Because we already got a few. So watching the Olympics event or a sport uh, live. Uh... Um, well, they're not live. They're not live because you don't want to watch at that time, you're saying? Yeah, it's happening during my off hours. So, got it. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so let's continue. I, I really want to move forward. Um, we have to um, kind of go to the next steps. We're, we're almost like, you know, 20 minutes left to the end of the session. Uh, what do we do next? Uh, Lane, would you be able to guide us into next step? Yeah, we want to prioritize the pain points. Okay, sure. Um, we can prioritize the pain points. How would you do that? What's, what's the fastest way, in your opinion, to do this? Uh, I'm going to say probably impact to the user. Got it. So can you describe like, you know, quickly imagine like I'm kind of like in two minutes or one to two minutes, tell me your thoughts on like, you know, what, which pain points are the most important ones for us to focus on? Hmm. Um, I'm going to say that um, getting a tailored view, if you're a casual um, view, uh, user, then you mm -hmm. um, just really want to filter out the information and not be barraged. Um, uh, and then, let's see, da, 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 da. Uh, probably the highlights. I may be biased because that was my idea. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. it's sort of a similar thread, right? Um, I'm, I'm busy. I'm just a casual user. I just want to see what's most interesting to me and what the most important things that happened today were. Got it. Okay. Um, sounds good. And, you know, I, I think it might be worth kind of mentioning this. I, I always say this in like product design, product improvement sessions to um, avoid a situation where people think there's only one way to answer these questions. It's totally fine to prioritize the pain points. I do that myself sometimes, um, but it's also okay to say, you're gonna go into the solutioning, think about a solution for each section for each pain point, and then pick the ones that you think are most interesting. I personally like Lane's approach because it, it helps you stay focused just on the pain points that are the most relevant. And you don't end up spending so much time thinking about um, pain points that you're not gonna focus on, right? Uh, it actually allows you to also think about multiple solutions for um, one particular pain point. And, and that's great, right? Like it kind of shows that you're really thinking about it from a um, you know, user journey perspective and you're the kind of a PM that can think about different ideas. Um, so I just wanted to kind of highlight that and sounds good, but you know, if you had more time, yes, like we would kind of dig more into like, 
what are the different trade-offs. I think it's totally fine to say, I think these two have like the biggest impact because I can imagine it's relevant to everybody. Um, some people might have more time than others. So um, it's probably hard to like exactly know um, what the right level is there, but um, everybody wants to get a tailored view and everybody wants to get some sort of a highlight. Um, so let's just like kind of dig into that and see if we can think about some ideas. So that sounds good. Um, let's move forward. What do we do next? So we've got like some kind of a couple of pain points that we've decided we want to focus on. What do we do next? Who's able to kind of guide me into the next step? Okay, Apurva, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, for the first pain point, it's uh, really going to start the way I'm, I'm envisioning this product. It's, it's more like a mobile app, honestly, and okay. where I get to input my preferences. So the first, like I sign up in this app and uh, it would ask me what are my interests in terms of sports, in terms of which countries am I supporting? Uh, do I have any friends who are also following? Uh, would I like to add them? Uh, you know, uh, I think, yeah. And maybe my time zone, I, I guess, if I really care about getting highlights very live or getting notifications live or something like that. Got but it, these are the main it. things that are coming to me. Got it. Okay. So, um, I think that's that's a one that's one product idea that's solid. Now I would also add that you want to make sure you're only talking about um, product ideas that are relevant to the problem. I think ninety percent or strong majority of what you described kind of met that. The one thing that kind of like raised a little bit of an alarm in my head was like when you said um, maybe I'd be able to add friends. Um, I don't disagree with you, that's a good feature, but um, if I wanna kind of be strict about what pain point we've decided to focus on, right? Um, that pain point didn't talk so much about, um, you know, us wanting to be able to have like some sort of a social connection. That is true. I think I should clarify why I think of that, why I thought of that feature. The reason is maybe the way I tailor my experience is based on my social group. And not just as because I would care got about it, following the similar games that my friends are following, which is the only reason I would want to add this feature. Got it. It's basically a way for you to kind of like, um, you know, identify what what is of interest to you to follow, right? You want exactly. you want it to be things that you can kind of talk about with your friends. Yeah, it's it's um, not like uh, I'm not thinking that we are going to have some sort of a fantasy betting game yeah. on some, you know, not like that. I'm I'm really just thinking it's going to tailor my. I'll just know what to follow. Got it. Okay, sounds good. Um, so thank you so much for clarifying that. Um, Apurva, go ahead. Uh, sorry, um, Tina, go ahead next. Yeah. Um. So actually, a little bit uh, similar and also different in terms of the platform approach that Apurva okay. suggested is. Um, I'm just thinking about like without having to build something new because I'm thinking like now like during the Olympics people probably do already go on Google search to search for scores so without mm -hmm. having to build something new during the during the Olympics people can probably go on Google and um, during that Olympic time frame Google can have like a specific feature that says, are you watching the Olympics here? Click here to maybe start um, inputting your preferences on how you would like to stay updated. Um, and from that first step, the next step with the user funnel would be to allow them to set up alerts and their notification preferences for their specific, specific sports, country, or type of information that they want to follow. What I mean by that is maybe they only want to follow the scores or medal count, or maybe they want to follow like somebody just did an amazing, you know, um, stroke or something that they just performed something really amazing in figure skating, um, click here to watch. Um, and then from there, once they set up their preferences, um, anytime they go back to Google, they're able to, whether it is through a notification entry point or directly going on Google, they will have like a spec, um, a uh, personalized dashboard that allows them to kind of read highlights for the day or for the week um, of what 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 went on um, for the things that they're interested in. So, got so it, got it. Thank you so much. And to be honest, um, this is I, I think I, I agree with you that this is a different product. Nothing wrong with that. That's great that you kind of thought about 
um, another user journey, right? It's a completely different user journey. Um, it's basically kind of driven by like Google um, taking a bit of a like a kind of a push approach, I guess, um, mm -hmm. inviting you uh, when you go to Google to like select your interests and then it says every time you want to use it, um, come to Google, use it. Now at this time, I'm not going to kind of comment on, um, you know, which idea I think is, um, you know, uh, superior over the others or like what, what we should focus on. Uh, mm -hmm. I think right now we're just kind of like at the ideation phase. So I'm just going to write down everything. We'd love to get a couple more ideas uh, from people here. Uh, go ahead, Vinay. Yeah, I mean, um, given that, um... I, I'm, I might have a Gmail ID and Google okay. knows where I am located, what my geography is. Uh, I'm probably also on YouTube and a bunch of other Google products. Um, so Google kind of knows what I'm watching, right? Uh, maybe Google makes some recommendations on what I could be watching and create Got a it. schedule that's personal for me so that I don't have to go pick it uh, because there might be a sport that's pretty popular that I don't even know that I think I should be watching. Um, just as a just as a parallel, if I'm like watching a lot of wrestling matches and there's some different types of wrestling at, at the Olympics, that'll be of my interest, right? So maybe, maybe Google could create a personalized schedule for me and uh, say that you, I could watch all these uh, particular sports. God, how, how would I? How would I, as a user, how would I come across that? What do you, What do you think would be the the like um, the user journey? And I think it's important for us to think about it. The reason I'm saying it's important is because, you know, like for example, you would you would go to Google usually with an intent, right? Mm -hmm. You like usually you start with, okay, here's what I need. I want to go to Google and look for it. Whereas that's usually not the case, for example, with a platform like Facebook. At Facebook, you're kind of like, I'm gonna go see what's out there, right? right? Um, and in this particular case of Olympics, um, you know, we're saying Google is going to give you recommendations. Now, the question that I would have for you is like, how, how does that content get concealed? Like what's, what's the interface for it? Where is it going to be? Oh, okay. So I should have clarified that. I think it could sit into the app that Apurva was describing before or, or the, wherever I'm setting up my preferences. I'll still have an option to set up my preferences, but Google can also make some recommendations. But to your point about the fact that um, Google people go to Google with what they want to search for, but on Facebook or TikTok, it's a different story. I 100% agree to that. Uh, I was hoping uh, like some sports are pretty popular in certain demographics uh, and Gmail ID gives that information. And then YouTube has my account information. It probably has access to my watch history. So based on that, Google could make some recommendations. Got it. Okay, that sounds good. So I'm going to put that under the uh, mobile app and say, like, also enable uh, recommendations based on user historical data, right? Yeah, okay, yeah I mean, enough. a recommended schedule, what I could be watching, when I could be watching with no conflicts, so that Got I just it. know that I show up at that date time and I have something to watch and then I walk away. So I don't Got get it. into the overhead of planning and figuring out where things are. Got it. So, um, Watching schedule. Okay, sure. Um, I will write this for now. I think that's a separate item. Um, going to write it here as a separate item for now. We'll come back to it later. Um, Lane, go ahead. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, so just on uh, the topic of recommendations, I can see two possible ways that you could get there. Um, okay. One of them is through search. So if you go to Google search and you're searching already for games, um, yeah. or uh, results or whatever, then um, it could um, suggest you, uh, you know, what to watch or um, highlights from your country or uh, from the day, whatever. And then um, another is, uh, I've seen this before where Google has a doodle and yeah. it encourages you to click on it and it takes you into a whole nother little animated space and, you know, you can do different things on it and that I've seen them do games and things like that um, in that space. So that's um, yeah. another possibility. Got it. Thank you so much for sharing that. And to be honest, the whole search part, I think we can even expand on that and say, um, I'm just like, because we have limited time, I'm trying to kind of go through it a little bit quickly with helping and say, there's the recommendations on Google search. And there's also like, you can have um, a Google search interface that is really optimized uh, for the Olympics, right? Like Google does that a lot. Google optimizes interfaces for search for like very specific 
use cases like for restaurant finding or for like flights or um, yeah, for all kinds of things. So um, let's just say it's an optimized UX, um, search UX for Olympics information, right? Um, I think that's another idea that we can think about, right? Um, and okay, sounds good. There are a couple more ideas that hopefully like one or two more minutes we can think about. Um, I want to go to people that haven't spoken so much. So Vinay already shared the thoughts. Okay, Apurva, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking of sort of connecting the first pain point, like the solution for the first pain point, and then transitioning to the second pain point, the solution for the second pain point. So the way I'm thinking is once we've entered our preferences, we get our we get to our dashboard, right, where I have gymnastics and basketball and uh, uh, let's say other sports where US is doing great, right? And that once I click on each tab, I basically get a view of to Vinay's point, a schedule of what past games have been, what are the future games coming up, where like what where where does let's say US or India, wherever, you know, whichever country you care about stand, and highlights of the past games would show up in the past. So it's like a timeline, right? That you can scroll through. And for the past games, it is going to show you highlights. Uh, I'm actually taking a little step further. I'm thinking uh, even a casual user might care about the whole game that has already happened, right? Mm -hmm. So if Google can have some partnerships, let's say with ESPN or like, you know, other sports channels that actually record all these games live or have recordings, then user can pay and select based on the highlight, select to view that event in full for you know uh like just that event right instead of buying the whole subscription for espn let's say so oh, that's like just thinking of from monetization perspective i know that's not one of our concerns right now or we did not even define any goals but um and then for the future events you know uh, what i would care about is uh what are the key participants right uh, so it's it's sort of like schedule and highlights yeah. are sort of intermingled together in a dashboard yeah yeah, fair enough. Okay, so I just want to, um, I agree with you. I, I think one thing I want to mention, like, you know, your, your point is about, like, um, it doesn't necessarily, like, you got to make sure the idea, you're staying as loyal to the problem as you can, right? Um, so I just want to kind of highlight that. Um, Himanshu, let's go to you as well. And I want to hear, um, you know, any, any thoughts there? Is there anything else we could do with products? Is there anything we could do with, like, I don't know, like um, with YouTube or like yeah. Google Voice, like there's so many other interfaces. Yeah, right? I was thinking about that actually. Perfect. So cool. Google, I would, I mean, along the same lines with uh, what the other participants have mentioned, Google has AI and machine learning. So they know where the most casual users are using their products. And they okay. can, you know, based on like, if I am a Gmail user, um, using Gmail every day, maybe they can advertise about, you know, there is an Olympic going on and, and uh, from there, the user journey can start, like they can get into the search or the mobile app wherever uh, we decide to build that product. And second, if somebody is using the- Sorry, Google, I just want to make Google sure we're, we're sticking to, we're staying loyal to the problem. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the pain points that we were decided to focus on is, they're interested in some specific areas, right? Of Olympics, right. they want to stay updated with them, and they want to know the highlights that are the most important things to them. Yeah. So, right? so I think I, we should be careful about not deviate. Like we're kind of moving towards like awareness. Um, okay. You know, so yeah, like, based on yeah, if if they are already on the product and knowing the Olympics, <laughs> so we can say we're based on their interest we can give them the update on their on the devices or products that they are using so somebody is using google home they can uh, get the update not just on the search or um, they can get the update on uh, google home right as a voice um, depending on which choices they have selected and uh, so google home YouTube, maybe now. maybe create a i'm just like quickly writing it a curated uh, voice update of what happened, let's say, um, during an interval at, at the Olympics, right? Right. Um, okay, fair enough. This is, and this is going to cover 
uh, tailored to the user's interests, right? Um, and the interest could be determined from search, right? Right, I'm just like kind of thinking about it. Okay, cool. Um, what else can we think about? Is, so, you know, we're kind of like only four minutes uh, left with the session, to be honest. There are like so many other ideas that we can think about. That's the interesting thing about um, Google is like they have a kind of an interface every time there's a new type of like data um, that has been used by like a large number of users. And basically the way we can think about it is for each of these interfaces, there could potentially be a product, right? And then we can kind of think about each of those, like there's the, sure, mobile, um, but there's like videos, um, there's voice we talked about, um, there's search of like kind of content that's out there. In some cases, we can combine some of these things. Um, so there's all kinds of things, right? But given we only have like three minutes or so, I'm curious to know, what do we do next? Like imagine like we came up with like, you know, a bunch of product ideas. We came up with like five, six ideas. Like what, what do we do next as the next step? Um, Tina, can you share what we do next? Yeah, definitely for me, it would be um, prioritization. And okay. I would prioritize it by one level of effort. And then the second one is, um, well, I guess the second one really depends on what do we think what do we think success would be based on, you mm -hmm. know, whether or not this product already exists or it's something that Google is already working on. So assuming that this is something that is still in the really early stage for Google to develop um, yeah. and improve on, I would, I would think that we would want to focus on um, adoption or acquisition of, of more users to engage with this product or, or feature, whatever it is. Um, and from there, we can look at our solutions and figure out which of those would have the highest impact to what we, what we uh, want, to, want to prioritize as success. Got it, got it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I kind of wrote it as um, you thought about like three you know, criteria um, for evaluating your potential product ideas. One is like the effort or ease of implementation. The other one is like how much impact and value it has for the user. And then the third one was like, you know, how big of the base um, is gonna potentially adopt this, right? Like, because, yeah. you know, to the earlier point, we wanna really focus on ideas that can really go to like a billion people. Um, yeah. Another so, thing I would say is, and I don't know if we should have clarified this in the beginning, is understand if there's any constraints um, that would be applied to design these solutions. So yeah. whether that's like time frame or resources. And that's a good point. And ideally, like, you know, we would have asked those questions. I think uh, <laughs> we didn't ask so many like clarification questions at first, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, it, it should have been ideally asked. Like, for example, one question I always ask is like, um, how much time do I have? Like, how many, yeah. engineer, how many engineering resources do I have, right? Um, I yep. think that's going to have a huge impact. Okay. So out of all this stuff, based on the criteria you came up with, which is like, you know, effort, impact, adoption, um, can you make an argument for one of these product ideas to be the right one for you to focus on? Like, how would you, how would you make that argument? Which one would it be? Yeah, um, I think that one of Google's biggest strengths is building some sort of a recommendation engine because they, are, they already have so much data available and that's organizing data and making something very personalized is something that they could, they could get really good at. Um, and so from the list of solutions that we've, we've built or we've listed here, I definitely think I would want to prioritize the recommendation engine just because it really speaks back to the main pain point that I heard um, that we listed earlier is personalization is something that that was a common theme across the board. Um, so building some type of a personalized recommendation engine would be um, what I would prioritize. And in terms of level of effort, I would think that is probably medium for Google, again, assuming I have all the resources um, and Google has the knowledge, it's, it's one of its biggest strengths, I would, I would rank it at medium. And I think that it would have a really high impact in terms of um, getting people to uh, adopt, adopt to this feature, use a recommendation engine, because it really speaks to their needs. Um, so, yeah. Got it. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong. And, and the reason I'm asking is because I want to make sure we're super clear. Um, recommendation could be delivered in so many different ways and so many different interfaces. It could be delivered on like YouTube. Um, it could be right. delivered on voice, on um, Google search, right? Um, right? It could be even on a mobile app in like you kind of, uh, um, you go to it and it's already there. 
Um, right. When you think about those different interfaces, which one do you think would be the one to focus on that would have like a largest impact? Yeah, I think we could start with Google search. Um, okay. Just because I think that, like you said earlier, people go to Google with an intent. And so if they're already ready to search and we can make that step um, easier for them before they even perform the search, help build something really personalized, um, that would be a great start. And then as like a secondary goal, if we see, you know, really high success um, or performance on, on this initial feature launch, then we can maybe think about how we spread this uh, personalized recommendation engine across other parts of Google's um, product portfolio, like voice assistant or YouTube. Got it, got it. Uh, yeah, totally makes sense. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think this is really interesting how like we kind of arrived at, a, at an answer that's like really thoughtful, right? Like we thought about the user groups, like, you know, what the use of implementation is, like you can see there's so many ways to actually do this. Uh, now, if there was more time, um, actually during the interview, we might have been asked to, um, you know, spend some time to actually do provide some wireframing, right? Um, something for us to keep in mind, and maybe we would have even come up with some like metrics to measure the success of this new um, product that we're building. Um, but now we're over time, so uh, we'll save that for another time. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending today's session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.